Guys, uh, it's been a little while since the last video. Uh, finally got me a video camera back so I could shoot some footage. Um, gosh, I'm getting really, really close to putting the deck down. Um, I didn't even cut the first piece yet, but just getting that close is just so exciting. But let me show you what I've gotten done and uh, give a couple of uh, tips on what I found and what I've done. Um, I've gotten, gosh, I can't remember what I've done since the last video, but um, all of my bulkheads and stringers were done. Let me just start from the very beginning. I put the cap back on, and the first thing I did, you see there, is I pulled those two pieces of the top cap together. They were about maybe three quarters of an inch too wide. When you close the window up there, um, that's why I went ahead and set the window back on, the windshield, and uh, closed it to make sure my gap was right, and then it wasn't. So I took it and went ahead and brought that, took a clamp, brought them both in, and obviously when I was measuring all this, I went ahead and put me a little stiff leg or stiff piece of wood to get my height correct up there. It's actually sagging a little bit since I've taken them down. But um, I got all that right to begin with. Then I came in here and went ahead and, you know, and um, uh, finished bedding and tabbing uh, the bulkhead. Uh, made the bulkhead there. Um, made the one in the very front. And um, got all that in after, like I said, I pulled that together. I didn't want it to be too wide and put it in and try to pull it together later. Uh, obviously, it can cause problems. Um, and I'm not doing it quite like the factory was. And I'll show you. Let me go up here to the front. Um, originally, the front stringers, I meant to get all the way around here where you can see. Originally, the front stringers would have come in. They would have followed the inside stringers right here. They would have followed those. Now, that's the deck cleat there. So, go to the inside of that. You can actually see there's the deck cleat, there's the inside. Those would have come straight up and went underneath just on the inside of what this is right here. Um, maybe you can get a better line right there. This one actually would have worked out perfectly. Now originally this was a half inch stringer on the inside and this one actually would have worked out. It would have come up right on the inside of it just perfectly with it. This one over here, like I say originally was a half inch, now it's a three quarter and I'm a half inch too far this direction. Um, the stringer just got off a little bit. So that would have made it actually come up and touch even with the outside of it. So not being able to do that, like I say, the front stringer would have come all the way up, you know, to the front of the boat here. Not being able to do that to make sure I can get, you know, where I need these pieces going up and down under the front boxes here. Level, I decided to go ahead and put my entire deck in um, and then come back and build the boxes on top of it. Um, you still have your supports off your sides of the hull. Um, coming over to the box, that's what's going to give it its uh, I guess support from flexing in and out. Um, like I said, the top cap's the top part, it'll still be off the bottom of the hole. So this top cap will be pushing against this outside of the hole here. Um, and I, I, every, I've looked everywhere in the world, I couldn't see any problems with it. Um, I had some, uh, it's called epoxy tile clad. Um, it's a two part epoxy paint. Uh, it does have a high gloss finish, I could care less. But I had some left over from a project I did at work. And uh, man, this stuff, you about can't cut it with a razor blade after it hardens. Um, I mean, literally, you'd have to grind it out. It's, uh, gosh, very close to gel coat. Uh, I probably am not going to go with any of that on the deck. Um, I, I'm still, I'm, you know, I'm, the, I'm in that torn stage between, um, am I going to go with, um, let me get some light ring see me. Am I going to go with uh, carpet back in here, or am I just going to go gel coat? You know... I realize carpet can hold water. However, I've got enough fiberglass mat and stuff that I can do. Um, I'm probably going to tab in two layers, 1708 in the sides of the deck. I'm going to come in and I've got enough 1708 to do one full cover in 1708. Um, or I may do a chop strand mat, 1708, then chop strand mat on top of that. I've got enough to do it that I can definitely seal, you know, obviously the bottom gets one, and definitely seal the top. That. Um, I just don't see any water getting in for at least a long period of time. This boat's not going to sit out at the lake. It's not going to be in the water. You know, when it's in the water, we'll be using it. The only time it's going to get wet is when it gets rained on or on the lake. Outside of that, it's going to be sitting here in the garage. Um, so I'm really torn right now. I like the finished look of carpet. I like the feel. Um, a lot of things about it. I'm toying around with all different kinds of ideas, but I'm just stuck right now. I'm not sure what to do. Um, so i got to make that decision soon, though, because next going down here in the next couple of days. But let me get back to that. My deck cleats, um, I took two by twos and then I cut them on a 45 degree angle on one side. I think I got some over here I can look at. Where are they? Let's see, here we are. You can see, here's one. 
until I cut this, figure out what middle turn it on a 45 degree angle. And so that way, when I took and wrapped, and I did 1708, I wrapped 1708 all the way up and around. Here's one real close, all the way up and around, and you can look, not a single air bubble, not one. Um, the reflection of the light is the clear. You see right there, that's not an air bubble. I mean, there's not an air bubble at all. Um, like I said, what I did was when I took and had all this coated with resin, the wood, I mean, my fiberglass originally went up to about two inches from the top, uh, just enough to get my deck cleaned on without being on the fiberglass, all the tabbing. Uh, came and wiped it down heavily with um, acetone, and you give it, you know, just a few minutes, and it gets so sticky. And um, I'd already, you know, dry fitted all my, um, my 1708, so I took it and stuck it to the sides, uh, excuse me, right on the top, pressed it down firmly on the top, and then kept my hands kept molding and wrapping it down and pushing it down and pushing it down until it was stuck there all by itself without any resin on it. Um, and it would actually stay very, very well. Then I started with the top, and I kept pushing, working on the sides, pushing on the sides. And I think when you have that wide of an area, it's not a problem. I will agree that when you've got like the, uh, I did those with chop strand mat, that's the three quarters. Uh, they're hard to uh, they're hard to do with 1708 and not get them in here. You can see. Let me move this real quick. You can see back here that I did those with um, just 1708, and then came back over the chop strand on those because I had some small pieces left over just to cap them. But uh, the gas tank's going in uh, here just shortly. I've got some. Uh, this is polystyrene. You can get this uh, at Lowe's. Like I say, this is one inch. It's um, pre-slit. I don't care about that. But um, it's made for piping insulation. Everything I found on polystyrene told me that um, it was really good for all kinds of chemical resistance. Um, matter of fact, I even found a forum talking about how they use polystyrene to put underneath the gas tank. Um, I do have a plastic gas tank. I don't want any kind of you know abrasion from vibration, etc. But to guys, that's where I am. Um, I can't wait to get the deck down. You know, it's just one of those milestones that you just don't you just don't think it's ever going to get there. Um, so definitely I promise you I'll be a happy video when I come back with that one, but uh, that's where I am and I'll talk to you guys later